I want everybody to have fun tonight, but please be safe. If you find yourself disoriented or confused, it's either you're drunk or Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> That was so good. Welcome to the White House Correspondence Dinner Recap Dark Brandon Edition. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. On Saturday evening, the White House Correspondence Association Dinner was held in Washington, D.C. Roy Wood Jr. was the comedian who gave a very, very funny speech. But President Biden brought the house down in his dark Brandon persona. He had some great one-liners as he roasted Fox and Ron DeSantis and Kevin McCarthy and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Donald Trump, but he also struck a very serious and solemn tone at the end of his speech, focusing on the freedom of the press, focusing on the preservation and protection of our democracy and the need to protect journalists at home and abroad. So let's go over the recap of what transpired at the White House Correspondents Association dinner. I played for you that clip at the beginning of this video of Marjorie Taylor Greene. Now I want to show you this clip where President Biden says, you know what? I actually like Rupert Murdoch because he makes me feel young. Here, play this great clip. You might think I don't like Rupert Murdoch. That's simply not true. How could I just like a guy who makes me look like Harry Styles? <laughs> Call me old. I call it being seasoned. You say I'm ancient. I say I'm wise. In this next clip, President Biden roasts Fox and basically says, here's who owns MSNBC, but guess who now owns Fox? And then he put a little zinger at the end on CNN. Here, play this clip. Look. It's great the cable news networks are here tonight. MSNBC owned by NBC Universal. Fox News owned by Dominion Voting Systems. Last year, your favorite Fox News reporters were able to attend because they were fully vaccinated and boosted. This year, with that $787 million settlement, they're here because they couldn't say no to a free meal. <laughs> and hell, I'd call Fox honest, fair, and truthful, but then I could be sued for defamation. <laughs> it ain't nothing compared to what they do to me. <laughs> Look. I hope the Fox News team finds this funny. My goal is to make them laugh as hard as CNN did when they read the, read the settlement. But then again, CNN was like, wow, they actually have $787 million? Whoa. In this next clip, President Biden has some great zingers about Tucker Carlson, Ron DeSantis and Kevin McCarthy. Play this clip. Vaccinated the nation, transformed the economy, earned historic legislative victories and midterm results, but the job isn't finished. I mean, it is finished for Tucker Carlson. What are you wooing about like that? Like, you think that's not reasonable? Give me a break. Just give me a break. Look, like I often say, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. We added 12 million jobs. That's just counting the lawyers that def defended the president. <laughs> at Ron DeSantis, I had a lot of Ron DeSantis, Ron DeSantis jokes ready. But Mickey, but Mickey Mouse beat the hell out of me and got there first. <laughs> Now look, can't be too rough on the guy. After his re-election as governor, he was asked if he had a mandate. He said, hell no, I'm straight. I'm straight. I'll give you time to think that one through. He 
got it? Look, y'all keep reporting my approval ratings is 42 percent. But what do you? But I, I think you don't know this. Kevin McCarthy called me and asked me, Joe, what the hell's your secret? <laughs> I'm not even kidding about that one. <laughs> the speaker's trying to claim a big win this week. But the last time Republicans voted on something this, that hapless, it took 15 tries. was good. In this clip, President Biden brings the House down when he talks about Don Lemon, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and Elon Musk. Watch this. You say I'm over the hill. Don Lemon would say that's a man who's prime. <laughs> Folks, it's wonderful to be back here again, proving I haven't learned a damn thing. <laughs> I want everyone to have fun tonight, but please be safe. If you find yourself disoriented or confused, it's either you're drunk or Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> Cam, thank you for hosting us. I love NPR. Because they whisper into the mic like I do. But not everybody loves NPR. Elon Musk tweeted that it should be defunded. Well, the best way to make NPR go away is for Elon Musk to buy it. <laughs> and that's more true than you think, anyway. Oh, I love this clip. This is when President Biden said, look, Roy Wood Jr., he basically bribed me to try to wrap up my speech quickly. Could you imagine this? Things have changed. Now presidents are getting paid hush money, not the other way around. Play this clip. I go where people are. The Daily Show. <laughs> Roy's a great guy. He once dubbed me the Jay-Z of Delaware. Don't let that look in your face, you did. <laughs> Tonight he asked me to keep it short, even offered me 10 bucks if I'd keep it under 10 minutes. That's a switch, a president being offered hush money. <laughs> president Biden here reminds the audience, don't underestimate him and Kamala Harris. Play the clip. <laughs> This dinner is one of the two great traditions in Washington. The other one is underestimating me and Kamala. <laughs> what I like about President Biden is he has a great sense of humor about himself. He has a great self-deprecating sense to him. And uh, this clip, I think, really typifies this here. Play this clip where he talks about his good old friend, Jimmy Madison. <laughs> Play this clip. This is not your father's press from 20 years ago. No, I'm serious. And you all know it better than I do. But still, it is absolutely consequential and essential. After all, I believe in the First Amendment. Not just because my good friend Jimmy Madison wrote it. <laughs> This dinner sums up my first two years in office. I'll talk for 10 minutes, take zero questions, and cheerfully walk away. Towards the end of the speech, President Biden then struck a very serious tone, though, and said, you know what? There really is a serious problem going on, though, with some of this right-wing extremist press. And the people in the audience knew exactly who he was talking about. Fox, Newsmax. OAN, this Trump propaganda media. And you'll see President Biden did something that 
you, you probably noticed it's, it's one of the things he also did at the State of the Union where he basically rallied everybody there and he was like, well, let's all make a commitment at the State of the Union. It was that you will not cut Social Security. You will not cut Medicare. Here at the White House uh, Correspondents Association dinner, President Biden was like, let's give a toast to democracy, that you'll support democracy. Watch this incredible moment. Play the clip. As I said last year at this dinner, a poison is running through our democracy and parts of the extreme press. Truth buried by lies and lies living on as truth. Lies told for profit and power. Lies of conspiracy and malice repeated over and over again. Designed to generate a cycle of anger, hate, and even violence. A cycle that emboldens history to be buried, books to be banned, children and families to be attacked by the state, and the rule of law and our rights and freedoms to be stripped away. And we're elected representatives of the people who are expelled from state houses for standing for the people. I made clear that we know in our bones, and you know it too, our democracy remains at risk. But I've also made it clear, as I've seen throughout my life, it's within our power, each and every one of us, to preserve our democracy. We can, we must, we will. I'd like to make a toast if I had a glass. <laughs> My grandfather Ambrose Finnegan said, if you ever make a toast without looking, you got a hole in your left hand. <laughs> Y'all think I'm kidding, I'm not. I'm probably the only Irish you ever met who's never had a drink in his life. Anyway, I'd like to make a toast, seriously. At this inflection point in history, let us commit that we'll be a nation that will embrace light over darkness, truth over lies, and finally, finally, finally restore the soul of the nation. Hear, hear. And a particularly solemn moment in the speech as well is when President Biden talked about two journalists uh, who have been uh, kidnapped, who have been detained abroad, Austin Rice in Syria and Evan Gerskovich in uh, Russia. And in this first clip, I want to play for you. Um, President Biden talks about the importance of free press and talks about how America stands with Evan. He's referring to Evan Gerskovich, who has been wrongfully detained in Russia. Um, play this clip first. Let me start on a serious note. Jill, Kamala, Doug, and I, and members of our administration, are here to send a message to the country and, quite frankly, to the world. The free press is a pillar, maybe the pillar, of a free society, not the enemy. Thomas Jefferson wrote, <laughs> you all know this quote, Thomas Jefferson wrote, we're left to me to decide whether we should have a government without newspapers or newspapers without a government, I should not hesitate to prefer the latter. To Evan's parents, Ella, Mikhail, and sister Danielle, as I've told you in person, we, not just me, we all stand with you. Evan went to report in Russia to shed light on the darkness that you all escaped from years ago. Absolute courage. A handwritten letter from prison to his family, Evan wrote, quote, I am not losing hope. In an interview, his mom, Ella, said, one of the American qualities that we absorbed is to be optimistic. That's where we stand right now. To the entire family, everyone in this hall stands with you. 
We're working every day to secure his release. Looking at opportunities and tools to bring him home. We keep the faith. And in this next clip, President Biden talks about Austin Tice, who has been wrongfully detained for 11 years in Syria. Play this clip. We also keep the faith for Austin, Austin Tice. His mom, Deborah, is here tonight. She knows from our several conversations, the conversations with me and my senior staff, we are not giving up. As I told you at this dinner last year, as I told you in the Oval Office, you raised an incredible son. When he was a kid, he was an Eagle Scout, a big brother, a born protector, a U.S. Marine, three tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Austin. Austin was a fearless journalist and a future lawyer. As a consequence of Austin showing the world the cost of war, he's been detained in Syria for nearly 11 years. It's simply wrong, it's outrageous, and we are not ceasing our effort to get him, find him, and bring him home. Tonight, our message is this. Journalism is not a crime. Evan and Austin should be released immediately, along with every other American held hostage or wrongfully detained abroad. Paul Whelan, unjustly held in Russia for more than four years, whose brave sister I've met with and whose family has never quit fighting for Paul, and I promise you, neither will I and neither will this administration until we get him home. And then President Biden closes the speech with some humor, of course. And uh, as he turns uh, over the podium to Roy Wood Jr., he says, uh, I may be able to take a joke, but you know who may not be able to? Dark brand. And here, play the clip. I'm going to uh, turn this over to Roy. Roy, the podium is yours. I'm going to be fine with your jokes, but I'm not sure about dark branding. It's all yours, pal. There you have it, folks. That was the recap of the White House Correspondents Association dinner. You'll recall that Donald Trump was too big of a coward. He was too big of a malignant narcissist. He had no sense of humor that he never showed up to a single White House Correspondents Association dinner. He had no sense of self-deprecating humor. He had no sense of that. It's just one of the traits of an authoritarian. And, you know, one of the things that I like about President Biden is, look, he could take a joke. I like leaders who can take a joke. That is one of the, you know, the funny things and and the important things um, about our, you know, about our system, about our democracy is that, you know, we could have presidents who could, who could laugh at themselves. That's a sign of strength, not a sign of weakness. Thank you for watching this recap. I'm Ben Micellas from the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 1.5 million subscribers thanks to your incredible support. So please just hit subscribe now. It's free. Check us out at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Midas Touch. Wherever you get your audio podcast, check us out as well by going to Midas Touch Podcast. Until next time, I'm Ben Micellas. Have a great day. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.